Hello my loves, what is up, what is going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a new pick a card reading, but before we hop into it, I wanted to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, which is Keen. If you guys have not heard of Keen before, they are a huge online psychic network full of psychics and spiritual advisors that are there to answer your life's questions. Since they're online, you can log in no matter where you live, in this world and you can log in 24 7 and they have different psychics that you can choose from that you can browse through they also have different price ranges to fit your budget and you can also choose your method of contacting your specific psychic whether that be through instant message phone call or through email whatever you are most comfortable with and you can also choose the amount of time that you want to spend with a psychic you're not having to dedicate yourself to an entire hour you can also just pay for small quantities of time, whether that be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you personally need to get your questions answered. And they also make the sign up process super simple. They basically ask you a couple questions, you fill out your name, your birthday, things like that. And then they actually match you to their most recommended psychics for you based on the questions that you answer, which helps simplify this entire process, which is great. My personal experience with Keen has been amazing. Um, I personally like to try out a few different psychics before picking the one that I want to spend the most time with just because I like to find psychics that are super detailed, super precise, and that feel very accurate. They feel like they resonate with me. So I highly recommend trying out a few different ones before picking the one that you wanna spend your most time with. So if you are interested in trying out Keen, you guys can head to my link trykeen.com slash gem to get your first 10 minutes for only $1.99. And again, that is trykeen.com slash gem to get your first 10 minutes for only $1.99. The link will be down below for easy access. And again, a huge thank you to Keen for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, let's hop right back into today's pick a card reading. Hello my loves, what's up, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a new pick a card reading. This one is all about your soulmate twin flame. We're going to try to get as much information as possible about your connection with them, about who they are, their personality, what they look like, all that kind of stuff, all in one reading. So we're gonna to try to get as much detail as possible about your soulmate or twin flame in this lovely reading. But yeah, with that being said, if you are new to pick a card readings, here's a quick little rundown of how they work. So over here we have a pile number one, two, three, four, and five. So you can take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards. Then once you're done choosing your pile, you can then scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. And then you can skip ahead to your personal reading all about your soulmate or twin flame. Um, so with that being said, if you also like to choose with crystals, let's go ahead and pop some crystals on these cards. All right, so if you like to choose with crystals, here are our crystal options. So over here we have some beautiful citrine. And if you wanna know what it looks like, here is our citrine. Then over here on group number two, we have this malachite. And then for group number three, we have this uh, mukaite jasper. And then over here on group number four, we have this beautiful amethyst. And then for group number five, we have this copper piece. All right, so again, take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards. Then once you're done choosing your pile, you can then scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. And without further ado, let's hop right into today's video. All right, so group number one, if you chose this pile, this is gonna be a reading, so let's get started. All right, so group number one, I'm getting knight in shining armor vibes from this, so we have the strength to represent you. We have the six of uh, swords to represent the connection between you and your soulmate. And then we have the six of pentacles as your soulmate or twin flame. So what I gather from this is when you meet your soulmate or twin flame, you're gonna be going through a big transition in your life because we have the six of swords here. So you're going to be transitioning out of maybe um, a harder time in life, especially since we also have strength here. So it's almost like, your patience was being tested in life or your strength was being tested in life and it seems like you're going to meet your knight in shining armor while you you know 
are going through a period of life where maybe you are needing to let go of a lot. Maybe you are even going through a breakup um, with somebody else and this is when you're going to meet your person or this could be like an ending of, of something else going on in your life but there's some sort of transition happening where it seems like you are, you know, kind of going through a harder time in your life or this could also again represent your soulmate or twin flame and maybe they're also kind of like you know going through a bit of a you know upheaval in life essentially um and you know transitioning into a calmer place so yeah somehow you're definitely transitioning out of something and you're coming in as strength so this means that you are you know just growing a lot in terms of who you are and lots of character development is happening lots of learning is happening you are realizing you know breaking through lots of like old patterns i see you breaking through lots of old patterns so if you had certain patterns in your love life or or if it seems like you've needed to be really patient with your love life and things like that you are finally kind of learning you know how to find inner peace, you are learning what you really desire in life. Strength is also represented and associated with Leo. So the Leo energy coming through, you are finally learning confidence. You are finally learning what you deserve. You are finally setting proper boundaries in your life and realizing what you actually want out of a person and what you're willing to put up with and what you're not willing to put up with. Because it kind of seems like maybe in your previous you know, events in life, maybe we've withstood a lot, maybe we've forgiven too easily, maybe we've let people kind of take advantage of us or walk all over us, and you're finally learning how to put up proper boundaries, you are finally learning how to, you know, say what you want and what you deserve, you're finally also finding the strength to have enough confidence and enough self-worth to know what you want and what you don't want in your life. And this is going to be the moment when your soulmate comes into your life because you're finally learning, you know, what is it that I deserve? And what do I, what am I going to be willing to deal with and what am I not going to be willing to deal with? You know, I feel like you're finally learning lots of self-worth and lots of self-confidence. You're finally getting yourself to a much better place in life with the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords means you're coming out of rough waters and going into clear, smooth waters. So it's kind of like you're um, in a canoe going down a choppy river, you know, and it's just like, you're all over the place. And then all of a sudden you finally enter this calm, serene, like everything's good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm totally getting a vision. So imagine that you're like going down like a crazy river in your canoe And then all of a sudden it reaches the peak and you go down this sort of like waterfall and you're, it's just kind of like a little bit out of control. Life is a little bit out of control. And you seem like somebody who, you know, wants to control life a lot, wants to be sure of it, wants to have stability, but it kind of seems like what you were going through is this, again, huge, intense sort of rapids, you know, you're going down the rapids and then you reach down a waterfall and then you reach the most serene place of your life. And then you're floating in this like beautiful oasis down below. And and at first you thought the waterfall was like the worst thing that could have happened. So whatever this chaotic ending was, because there's some sort of ending here. Again, it could be an ending of a relationship, an ending of a job, an ending of something in your life. Okay. And you thought that, oh my God, this was so scary. You know, falling down the waterfall and being out of control of this scenario seemed like the scariest, worst thing. But then you literally fall into this most beautiful oasis, like fairy tale oasis type of situation. And the waters are calm. It's like there's fireflies flying around you. It's like you know, the trees are so beautiful that are surrounding you and the water's so calm and peaceful and you can just glide wherever you want to go and everything is super beautiful. And then off in the distance, there's like this shining lantern and then you go over towards that and that ends up being where you find your beautiful soulmate and your soulmate was just right there the whole time. 
you know, at the end of this crazy waterfall, at the end of this crazy rapids. And then all of a sudden you're just in the most beautiful, you know, place in life where things feel like they're no longer chaotic and they are, you know, quite beautiful. And this is where we get the knight in shining armor energy right here with the six of pentacles. It's like at the end of that waterfall, it's like that was your soulmate. So at the end of this, you know, crazy period in your life, all of a sudden there's this gleaming, shimmering, beautiful life that you're now entering and creating, but it's only going to be created once you allow yourself to let go of control and stop trying to con stop trying to fix life, stop trying to swim upstream. You know, when things are getting really tough and you're going through those rapids, you know, and we're trying to be a salmon swimming upstream, it doesn't really work. Once we just go with the flow and we allow life to take us towards the transitions and the endings of certain things, instead of trying to make something work that's clearly not working, it is time to just, you know, free fall, let yourself go down that waterfall, even though it seems really scary, but it's taking you towards where you're meant to be. And again, this might have already happened to you so that you might have already met your person and this is just confirming what you went through. Or this could be, again, something that's coming up in your future that you sort of feel like, okay, yeah, that feels like it fits my situation. So at the end of that, you know, waterfall though, six of pentacles, your partner, your person is somebody who is so giving. Your partner is somebody who wants to have an equal relationship with you, who wants to, you know, help you and uplift you and help you see your worth. This person doesn't want to um, put you down. They don't want to be above you. They want to be equal with you and they want to show you what a beautiful relationship is. This person I think is very reliable and they're a very giving person who's used to giving a lot. They are someone who I see you know, even if they don't have a lot, they're willing to give. But I also see that this person probably does have a decent amount, possibly even more than they let on to in the beginning. Uh, I think they're a very humble person. They're very supportive. We also have a lot of six energy here between the six of want or six of swords and the six of pentacles. Um, the six energy, this is about harmony. This is something that's in balance. Sixes also represent the endings to karmic relationship cycles. So previously, maybe you were in a lot of karmic relationships that seem to be, you know, really testing your triggers and really helping you develop as a person. But after all of that, it's like you reach this harmonious place and this person wants to be in harmony with you because you've now already learned your karma. You've dealt with, you know, those karmic relationships and you've learned from them and this person wants to help lift you back up and I think that you're going to be very confident with this person and your relationship together is going to be very strong where you two both put each other in the spotlight rather than somebody wanting to just take the spotlight and take the energy. This person wants to have a very you know, reciprocative, balanced relationship where this person wants to put effort in. This person's very conscious about putting effort in, in fact. You know, they're very conscious about how much time they're giving you and what they're doing for you. I wouldn't be surprised if this person also enjoys giving you random surprises or random gifts as well. I see that you two also might enjoy traveling together or might have a desire to travel a bit together. So with that being said, let's go ahead and shuffle these cards and see if we can get anything else for you to represent your relationship. So we have the moon. So this is going to come unexpectedly. I think that you two are going to meet in a very unexpected way. And it also may, may take some time to like really open up to each other. Ooh, and then we have justice as well. So two major arcana cards here. Um, so the moon, this represents our emotional state and also the moon's likes to be very hidden. So for one thing, I'm gathering that you two are going to meet in a more unexpected way, sort of when you least expect it. Um, the moon also, it represents our emotions. So when you first meet, you might be sort of closed off or not really open emotionally, but there's a lot of like underlying emotion that's happening. There's a lot of intuition and you two might feel 
sort of something going on between you two, but we might not know what it is at first because things are a little bit mysterious between you two at first because I think that there's, um, from you, maybe you have a hard time fully opening up or fully letting somebody in because of what you've been through. But this person's going to be very supportive and I think over time, it's you're just gonna start opening up more and more because this person wants balance. This person wants to bring you up. This person wants to lift you up. This person wants to be equal to you and they see you as an equal. They don't see you below them, even though at first things might feel a little bit like imbalanced because of maybe what you've gone through and things like that. But there's a balance between you two where you two are very much equal and you two are very much like meant for each other because of the way that you see each other. You both hold each other to a very, you know, good light and you both see each other very highly. Justice is also very connected to Libra. Um, this is connected to Cancer. This is connected to Libra. And I, the, Libra is like the relationship sign. It's the sign of relationships and flirting and things like that. So I also see that romance is going to be something that both of you really desire and you both desire a very deep connection because we also do have the moon card so both of you are actually very deep deep people and very romantic and i see romance you know being a, a big thing that connects you both you two are also going to develop a very deep connection together because the moon since it represents our emotions and it represents very deep emotions you are going to feel deeper for this person than you ever have for anybody in your entire life. And they're going to feel that same way about you. It's very equal. It's very balanced. You two feel the exact same about each other. It's incredibly balanced. Also, sixes are incredibly balanced. They represent harmony. So both of you are incredibly balanced together. I think you two are going to form a very strong relationship since we do also have strength here. It's going to be a very committed, very strong solid relationship. Justice also represents the court system. So I do see you guys getting married. So strength is like commitment. Justice is like signing court papers and things like that. So I also wouldn't be surprised if you two absolutely get married. And yeah, I also see you two being able to sort of work through any problem. Like you two are very fair with each other, especially when it comes to things that you want, compromises, discussions, and things like that. I don't see it reaching a point where it's argumentative at all because strength here represents that we are in very good control over our emotions like we have a good handle on our emotions and we don't let them get out of control and justice is also you know being very truthful very honest this person is incredibly honest and they they really appreciate honesty and i think both of you have learned from your past the importance of honesty in a relationship the importance of communication the importance of respecting each other's boundaries and wishes so you two have very good boundaries together this person knows the proper boundaries of a relationship and you know the proper boundaries of a relationship and again it's like you both have a strong hold over your emotions, not in a bad way to where you repress them at all, but you just know how to speak, how to speak your truth in a way that it is balanced, in a way that is easily reciprocated by the other person. So I think both of you have very good communication skills and very equal communication skills where you two understand each other a lot and your emotions are very much in control and very good. So with that being said, let's get into some more cards. We have the Spirit of Place card and we also have Storm Fields. So this is also reminding me of how you two are going to meet this Storm Fields card because it seems like, you know, you're going through a crazy bit of a whirlwind in life um, right before you meet this person. Um, Spirit of Place is also talking about how maybe we've been having to be patient in our love life for a while so maybe either one of you maybe it's been a little bit of time since you had a relationship or maybe we haven't even had a relationship at all like one of you might not have maybe um but again it's a general reading so i'm just pointing out all the different things but spirit of place sort of means patience there's been patience in your love life and maybe we've been attracting the wrong type of people because maybe we've been 
desiring love so much to where we sort of compromise too much previously, but you're finally realizing that you cannot compromise yourself like that. You have to have certain boundaries. You have to have, you know, a certain, sorry, my stomach is grumbling, but you have to have a certain sort of um, respect for yourself. And instead of longing for love, this card is about um, becoming love, loving yourself so much. And right when you become love, that is when love is going to come into your life. So right when you you know, start to love life instead of going through all this chaotic and putting yourself through this chaotic time and feeling like things are out of control. It's like, let yourself just go down the river without trying to control anything. Let yourself fall through the waterfall. Then you're going to end up in this oasis where you can just fall in love with life because life is clearly trying, the universe is clearly trying to guide you in a certain direction because of you trying to manifest something, right? So if you're trying to manifest something, if you're trying to manifest, you know, love into your life, allowing the universe to rearrange things because the universe is going to try to rearrange things but if we try to then control it and be like I don't want to lose this and I don't want to lose that why can't it work out in the way that I have it in my head it's like sometimes we don't know what's best for us because we haven't experienced everything we're not aware of everything that there is to offer us um, that there is there for us to be offered Um, so when you ask for the love of your life when you ask to meet your soulmate Maybe we have to let go of certain people in our life that are not our soulmate, but we might be attached to the idea that they are, right? And so realizing that your soulmate might be somebody completely different than what you current, than who you currently think and being able to allow certain things to actually end in your life. There's certain things that are going to come to a complete end before you meet your soulmate. But if we keep trying to swim upstream, if we keep trying to fix things that are broken, we're going to keep ourselves from you know, flowing with the stream of life that is trying to bring you to your destination. It's you're, you're literally going down the river, trying to swim in the opposite direction. The universe is like, please, I'm taking you to where you're trying to go. Just flow with it. I'm taking you there. Just continue on with the ride. But we're too scared of losing something. So um, one thing that you're going to have to do or experience before you meet your soulmate is going with the flow and allowing certain things to come to their end in your life okay uh the next two cards (laughs) look at this we have the transition card that makes total you're going to be going through a transition i mean that's something that we've been talking about this entire time we also have the angel number 33 right here so harmonizing your life you're going to need to start harmonizing your life and having a love for yourself and a love for life, falling in love with life and you to where you don't long for something. Because when we're longing for something, that is the energy and the emotion of, I lack it, I don't have it. And when we hold on to the emotion of, I lack it and I don't have it and I need it so bad, we reaffirm and we're putting out the vibration to the universe that, hey, I don't have it. And then the universe goes, okay, well, I'm going to bring you more of that emotion. But if we can transition to the emotion of I love life and I love myself, the universe is going to be like, well, I'm going to give you more of that. I'm going to reflect more of that to you. That's when you meet your soulmate. That's when you meet your twin flame is when you become your own soulmate. You become your own twin flame because then that's what the universe is going to begin reflecting back to you. Your vibration attracts like vibration to it. Then we also have prosperity. So you're going to reach so much abundance in your love life as well. Um, I'm also getting the feeling that your person is going to be decently successful. That's another thing I'm sort of picking up on is your person is going to be decently successful. That's why we have the six of pentacles and prosperity. And that's why they're represented as the six of pentacles. I see them as somebody who's like pretty hardworking or they just have, you know, more than enough resources. And they are so freely and ready to like give to somebody. All right. And then the next two cards, we have safe home. So you might also be, you you might also move right before you meet your soulmate. We have the six of swords and safe home. So either one of you might have just recently moved or maybe even both of you when you two meet each other. And you're also creating a safer environment for yourself. Whereas before, it kind of seems like things were maybe a little bit chaotic in your home life. Ooh, and then we also have fertility. 
Ooh. So fertility can mean that you two have children right away. It can mean that. It can mean that you know, unexpected pregnancies, or maybe you two just desire to have kids right when you meet each other. But fertility can also just mean, like it doesn't have to mean pregnancy all the time. It can also mean that there's a lot of passion between you two. There's a lot of exciting energy. You know, it's a very fertile, abundant, prosperous place. So it's like you two feel very in love with life together and like you two can create a lot like there's a lot of dreams and a lot of creation energy maybe you two are also going to build a home together because fertility with safe home maybe you two are also going to you know build something because fertility is when we birth something and when we're birthing a home it's kind of like we're we're building a home right so that could be another thing that you two uh, plan to do together pretty soon after meeting each other you two also might move in right away together. I'm also getting that you two might move in right away together because maybe one of you is in a situation where you're going through, again, so many transitions in life to where maybe your home life is a little bit unstable and you might move in with this person right away. Or maybe we're even getting pregnant soon and then moving in with them. That could also be another aspect and I'm not saying that that's going to be the case for each and every one of you it is a general reading because fertility can represent lots of different things right but I'm just pointing out all the different options here just so you know Um, because again fertility can also just mean that there's so much abundance between you two so much creative energy between you two and again it could be about building a home could be about moving in together right away or it could even be about you know getting pregnant and then you know moving in together but this person i think is very safe to be around and they want you to feel comfortable this person has your comfort in mind they're very conscious about you know how are you feeling how can i you know help us be equal how can we be on the same page together all right and then the next few cards i'm also going to restart my camera it's about to cut out soon okay We are back. So we have Libra again, which is so interesting because we had Justice, which is very connected to Libra. So, um, and also the Six of Pentacles, I always find that card very connected to Libra as well, since it's also kind of about scales and balance and things like that. Um, But I would not be surprised if you two get married. (laughs) I think it's inevitable at this point with all this Libra energy. Um, Also with Libra, Libra is all about relationships, flirting. Um, Libra is also an air sign. So some of you might meet this person online since Libra is, you know, air sign, social media, it can represent social media, it can represent dating apps. Um, It can represent meeting them through mutual friends. It can also represent um, just more of your equality together. Like you two are very very much equals. And I also see this being like twin flames because these almost look kind of like little flames coming out of the uh, the little cups. And it's interesting that this card has like a similar situation. So I definitely see this twin flame energy. You two are very much equals to each other. And it's almost like you balance each other out and you kind of complete each other. Not that you weren't completed before, but it's like together you two feel very complete. Um, the next card that we have, we have Sagittarius. So lots of expansion together. I think things are going to happen very quickly when you meet each other because Sagittarius, it's like, yeah, it's doing something very quickly. It's a very quick energy, but it is also about expansion. So I think when you two meet each other, there's going to be a very expansive energy. Things are very fertile. So again, this can also be about expanding your family this could also be about expansion in what you two own or what you have and then expanding your assets wanting to reach to new higher goals Sagittarius is also about travel so again some travel plans or you two might desire to move to a new city move to a new home together um, pretty soon after meeting each other I also think that you two want very similar things out of life too I see you two being very similar and you complement each other very well And then we also have Pluto of Rebirth. So um, Pluto is the endings and beginnings. So the fact that you have Pluto coming up, Pluto is very transitory, (laughs) transitory. That's not the right word. Um, Transitory? No, it's very transition type of energy is what I'm trying to say. So it is the 
endings of something that lead to a beautiful new thing, rebirth. And it's interesting, we have the word birth and fertility. I am just saying, I see kids in your future and I see a wedding. So <laughs> yeah, Pluto, since it's about endings and beginnings, your beginning with your soulmate is going to come through the ending of something else in your life. So definitely keep that in mind. There's something that you need to let go of in order to meet your soulmate um, before you meet them. So with that being said, the last three cards that we have here, we have building blocks. I definitely see building a home. I just want to say, I see building a home. Hmm. Very interesting. Building blocks is also, you know, building something that's very supportive. I think both of you are trying to build a very lasting relationship and to also reach new heights. Both of you want to build each other up. So this is a very balanced relationship. You two don't want to leave each other behind at all. It's very balanced. Like when you build yourself up, you want your partner to rise too. It's like you're very much on the same plate together um, and having each other's back. We also have clean it up. So I do think both of you are also kind of cleaning up your lives when you two meet each other because you're like, I want to be the best I can be for this person because this person brings out the best in me and I want to, I want to keep that up. I want to really be my best. So I think that you're also going to be cleaning out lots of your life as well. So certain things that maybe weren't so good, weren't so healthy, toxic people, toxic habits, patterns. I think that you're going to be really just sort of cleaning up your life and cleaning up who you are when you're with this person just because you just desire to be the best around them. Um, <laughs> we also have regeneration. So this is also about the rebirth. This is also about the transition. This is a card that re-represents all of what we were talking about. It's kind of like your life feels like it's sort of falling apart and then you realize it actually took you to the best place possible and the reason why it was falling apart is so you could rebuild it so you could rebuild your life with this new person so there's certain things that are going to be falling away in your life and you might think at first like oh my god this is like the worst thing ever but it's actually bringing you to the most fertile moment because also when when like a forest burns down and it creates all that ash it actually provides so much nitro nitrogen i think to the soil which causes so much so many plants to grow in a much more healthy way because it refertilizes the soil with all of the things that plants like to absorb and what causes plants to be super green and super healthy. So this sort of ending in your life is going to actually cause your most fertile, most prosperous life to bloom out of it. And all of that destruction is going to clean itself up. You are going to be building such a beautiful life with this person. And it's going to be so nice to start on a fresh foot because it almost feels like you are just, you know, on a completely fresh foot with this person. It's going to be so beautiful and so amazing. And yes, that is what we have here for you. Group number one. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see videos like this in the future. Oh, and I also wanted to see what your um, person might look like. So we have these cards right here to talk about um, the looks, potential features of your soulmate or person. So let's see what we have here. All right. So when we have the childhood card, this means this person looks younger than what they really are. So this person just might have a youthful appearance to them. I don't think they actually like look like a kid or anything like that, but I just think that this person has taken care of themselves very well to where they look possibly younger than what they really are. I also think this person has very beautiful features as well. So we have this lotus flower and we think about a lotus flower. It's very nice and pleasant to look at. So I'm also thinking that your person is, you know, very pleasant to look at. Lotus flower also reminds me of, they have like a suppleness to them. Like some sort of suppleness to where you desire to just like kiss them or like cuddle them. Like there's a suppleness there that's like really enchanting. Um, we also, oh my gosh. I cannot believe how many rebirth cards we have. The fact that we have rebirth child, you guys are having babies together, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I know we're talking about what this person looks like, but the, I just cannot. Rebirth, fertility, childhood, 
rebirth. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I see kids. Um, and then we also have the eagle. So this person has very beautiful eyes, very enchanting eyes. Like I think you're drawn to this person's eye, to this person's eyes right when you see them. Um, I'm getting the fact that they probably have green eyes because we have a lot of green going on here. So I'm picking up green eyes. Um, I think, yeah, this person has a very youthful look to them. And it's almost like they're wanting more of a fresh a fresh look when you meet them because we have this rebirth sort of childhood you know they're kind of like returning back to their just authentic look I don't think that this person is um altering their look much in any way I don't think this person like colors their hair or anything like that I feel like this person's like wanting to be as natural as possible that's what I'm getting from this is like they're wanting to be more natural um but yeah very beautiful eyes I'm also gathering that like their beauty is also gonna like grow on you and they're still like getting more and more beautiful this person's gonna age like fine wine to say the least um because also with this unfolding it's like as this person ages it's like they they remain still quite young in how they look like they re they remain sort of more youthful than what they really are and as they age it's just going to like they just still look great i think this person is trying to take care of themselves and you know, keep a healthy body. I'm gathering that this person tries to be as healthy as possible. Again, sorry, my stomach. Um, and that they sort of just age like fine wine. So yeah, that is what we have here. They're not being incredibly specific on looks. Um, I also feel like they're going to have a lot of balanced symmetry since we do have a lot of Libra energy here. They just seem very um, symmetrical in how they look and that they sort of have this sort of youthful and also supple um, appearance and possibly green eyes is what we're kind of getting on this but their eyes are definitely going to be very intense and really like draw you in it's like their eyes are something that you really like to focus on so with that being said i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future and hopefully i see you there bye all right so group number two i cannot wait to get into your readings so let's find out all the information that we can about your soulmate and twin flame all right, so group number two, here's what we have for you. So you're coming up as the magician right here. Then we also have the three of pentacles and the chariot to represent your connection with your person, your soulmate, your twin flame, and your soulmate or twin flame is coming through as the, uh, the knight of cups. So let's talk about what all of this represents. First off, the most intriguing part of this reading would be your connection right here because we have the three pentacles in the chariot this sort of represents and alludes to the fact that most likely you two would know each other while the other person is still in a relationship perhaps or maybe like just recently getting out of a relationship um something along the lines of that but i'm almost getting the feeling that you two will sort of know each other and the other person's going to be in a relationship at that time um but it's obviously not going to work out and then you two are going to end up together so yeah uh, that's sort of like a a situation that I'm kind of seeing right here because the three of pentacles does represent sometimes three different people right so somehow this is sort of like a love triangle um but it ends up you know not working out between you know either you and another person or between your soulmate and another person and then you and your soulmate actually get together um afterwards and then go off <laughs> in your lovely fairy tale after that so it's sort of like a shift in directions because even the chariot is like a shift in direction and you know we're kind of like looking in a new direction and realizing like hey um i kind of see that i'm meant for this other path and i kind of see that i'm meant for this other thing so that's sort of the energy we have going on over here you coming through as the magician this represents um it's very connected to mercury which is the ruler of virgo and gemini so that could be a prominent sign in your astrology perhaps just because you're coming through as the magician but either way even if not you're someone who is very good at communication for one just because the ruling planet is mercury so you're very good at sort of like communication or you know wanting to be honest and desiring to be honest um 
you very much think about the way that you word certain things and you very much listen to other people's words. This is also a great card for you know somebody who wants to be a great listener and wants to be there and really appreciates mental stimulation. So you might also be somebody who really appreciates communication and having somebody who's very intellectual with you, somebody who's very smart that you can have a lot of fun with and a lot of laughter. I see you as somebody who enjoys fun, you enjoy laughter, you enjoy banter with your partner or you enjoy just having like fun conversation and also wanting to just you know manifest the best possible life i see you as somebody who's very much a visionary and you like to imagine like the best possible scenarios and actually create um, the best possible scenarios i see you as somebody who's also probably very creative and you have visions of what you could see in your life and you chase after that and you desire that you thrive when you're chasing after what you desire um and because you're such a visionary i see that you are very good at manifesting because you see exactly you know what you want what your most ideal partnership would look like and things like that and when things don't match up to that i see that you probably get very bored very easily or possibly even you know, um, a bit down because you see great potential in everything. And I feel like you're a very excited person who's very optimistic and excited about life, but you love to be in creation mode. You love to be able to, you know, create the best possible life, the best possible scenarios. You don't want to just get stagnant and, you know, um, fall into bad habits or bad routines um, or fall into a boring lifestyle. You're somebody who I think wants to manifest the best and you see, you're very good at seeing and pinpointing, you know, what looks like the funnest life, what looks like the most exciting thing. You're very good at seeing that and then being very clear on like, hey, that's what I want to manifest in my life. So I see you as that very creative person, a very fun person and also like a pioneer who you don't want to be just like anybody else. You don't want a relationship that's just like anybody else. You want something that's fun, that's unique, where you can experience something new. You're very much about, um, like, excited about experiencing new things. Since your partner here is coming up as the Knight of Cups, this is a person who has lots to offer in terms of romance. I feel like your partner is going to be somebody who's very romantic and also somebody who's very energetic and fun because we have this lightning bolt coming into this cup, right? And so I think that this person, for one, you're going to set their heart on fire. <laughs> you're going to light them up. This person might be used to having a more like sort of, you know, calm, chill sort of life. You are sort of lighting them up. This lightning bolt coming into the cup, like, you energize them, you excite them very much. Um, this person can get excited on their own, totally, but for some reason I see when you're coming into their life, your pizzazz and your sort of spark is going to spark up this person and excite them a lot more than maybe what they're used to, which will be a great thing. Um, I also think that this person is truly romantic and they like to get deep. They like to have deep conversations. They like to get to know you, your heart. They're very intuitive. They like to feel your soul. You're more of a fun sort of, I see you as a bit more, um, you know, a bit more mental, a bit more in your mind. Like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. Like I see visualizing this, creative here, fun stuff here, spontaneousness here. They are very much more a bit calm they can, get, they can get excited, don't get me wrong. They can get excited, but I see them as more of a calm, romantic, I want to get deep. I want to have like, you know, deep romance with you, candlelight dinners where it's just me and you. I feel like this person can be a homebody at times, but together you two sort of spark each other. And I see travel possibly because the magician with the chariot can definitely also be travel. Your person also, I think, likes to talk about emotions. They like to have a deep emotional connection to somebody. They want to feel things, you know, below the surface. This person does not like surface level conversations. They want something deep. And I think that's something that excites you because you like how deep they are because it, it stimulates your intellectual side. And um, 
you also, again, really light this person up. Like there's electricity between you two and you two are around each other. It's like this spark, this spark of electricity and uh, things like that. So that is looking quite beautiful. I also think when you two meet each other, there's going to be a sort of shift in direction where you two thought your life was going. It's going to shift in direction because Chariot also talks about a shift and change in direction. So as you two meet each other, I think both of you will sort of combine each other's sort of interests and there's going to be a whole new life that's sort of birthing from that and a whole new direction that's sort of birthing from that. I'm also gathering that this person really just like looks up to you with almost like a sparkle in their eye and they're just like, wow, like I can't believe that this person exists. Like you seem very zesty, very much like spontaneous, excited. And I think that you're also somebody who probably manifests things into your life very easily just because the magician is all about manifestation. Um, so I do think you manifest things into your life very easily and you're a very wise person. And this person's quite fascinated by you. Like they're very excited when they meet you and they're very like, wow, like I can't believe you exist. Like this is really cool. Um, so yeah, this person really looks up to you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and shuffle these cards to get some more info between you two. So let's see what else Spirit has to say right here. We have the Six of Cups. So you two might... Yeah, you two have like a previous knowing of each other before you two actually get together. I think you two might be friends prior to actually being lovers. Somehow you either meet each other as friends or you know each other from childhood. You've known each other for a long time or you know each other from a mutual friend, something along the lines of that. But yeah, I think you two know each other before being in a relationship is what I'm gathering from this. We also have the Eight of Pentacles. So this could deal with like working on your relationship together and wanting to be the best that each other can be for each other, if that makes sense. You two want to be your best for this person and you two both are very dedicated to working on this relationship and building something that's solid. We also have the five of pentacles. So yeah, one of you might be going through some sort of like breakup when you first meet each other and might be going through like a interesting transition time. We also have the six of pentacles. So it's almost like one of you guys is like helping each other up, helping each other through this time of transition. And then all of a sudden it ends up being romantic. We also do have a lot of pentacles here, so this could also be a connection that forms through work somehow, or it could be a connection that forms in the physical world. Like I don't really see you two meeting online or anything like that. I'm definitely seeing more of an energy of like a physical meeting before you two, you know, get together and become romantic together. But that is kind of what I'm seeing over here is more of a physical meeting and the ending of a different relationship or an ending of something before you two actually again become romantic and I almost see this person definitely sort of helping you through this time or you helping them through this time whichever way it might go um, I'm not sure but yeah it's very interesting so with that being said let's see what our other cards have to say about this so oh my gosh look at that we have the soulmates card so you two are definitely soulmates of each other to say the least um, this card it's like they have the key to your heart you have the key to their heart. It's almost like you two didn't even realize at first how perfect you two are together, but you sort of realize it as you get to know this person more and more and you realize like, wow, this person's actually like perfect for me. And it's gonna happen in lots of unexpected ways since we have numerology of number five right here. It's gonna happen in very unexpected ways. You also have the observer. So yeah, this person or you has, you have their your eye on each other before you two even become romantic. It's almost like you two are sort of observing each other and seeing each other um, before becoming, you know, partners. So there's another confirmation of that. We're definitely on the right track of this. Then we also have imagine. So maybe you, you two have each other in your imagination and you two kind of think about this relationship before it actually comes to fruition. And maybe you two sort of imagine like, hmm, like 
I wonder what that would be like, you know, because you find this person definitely intriguing. Both of you find each other intriguing on some level. And it's almost like you two are sort of manifesting this by imagining it so much and thinking about it so much and then realizing like, oh, hey, there is an attraction here. But I don't think you two are going to realize that attraction until the ending of this other sort of relationship, until sort of the ending of this other sort of thing. And then as like this person sort of, you know, helps you through this time and is there for you, a sort of relationship blossoms here uh, because it's something that's being thought about, you know, and it ends up sort of manifesting because we're thinking about it so much. And then the next two cards, we have Rock Bottom, and then we also have Dragon's Lair. This is actually incredibly fitting for you because the Dragon's Lair reminds me of something that's sort of forbidden, like, oh, we can't go there. Like, that's that's bad to go there. And so the Dragon's Lair reminds me of the fact that maybe, you know, Maybe you two have a mutual friend and it's sort of awkward to get together. Maybe there's a situation where it feels sort of forbidden to sort of be with this person. It feels like it's, you know, walking into a bit of a forbidden place to be with this person. So yeah, definitely getting, gathering a bit of that sort of energy here because both of you are sort of like, ooh, is this, are we really supposed to be together? But yet you feel this strong connection with this person. There's this soulmate energy. It's kind of like, how could we not explore this? Because, yeah. So it's very interesting, sort of lover's triangle <laughs> um, energy happening here. We also have the card of rock bottom. So I don't think that you two are going to get together until, you know, the ending of something happens for one of you, the ending of another relationship. And then it's sort of like, we feel a bit devastated um, but this person's going to really start helping you out. And then it's sort of like, we enter the dragon's lair. We enter the, the forbidden zone where, you know, we, we feel like, you know, we weren't meant to be, but yet we were, you know, it's sort of that kind of energy where it's like, how could life like play out this way? It's like such a, it feels like a no-go zone, but yet at the same time, it's like your hearts are calling each other together so much to where you're just like, Yeah. Like, you are my person, I, it, and it sucks the way we had to meet, but <laughs> you just are my person. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the energy that we're getting over here for you guys. So let's see what else we get here. So we have the card of Ancestors coming through and Inspiration. So another thing that I'm gathering from the Ancestors card is that you two might have had past lives together. So you almost feel like Right when you meet each other, you feel like you've known each other for a lifetime. You feel like you've known each other for a very long time, possibly in past lives, things like that. Um, and also ancestors can also be a, a card that explains that we know each other from before, like even earlier on in, in this lifetime. So we've known each other and we met each other prior to there being like a romantic interest. We also have the card here of inspiration. So I do think you're gonna really spark each other up, really inspire each other. And I think that both of you seem to just like know how the other person works, how the other person ticks. Like you know what excites each other. You know how to put a spark in each other and you two feel that spark. There's a spark between you two that's just undeniable, um, which is I think why there's this big intrigue between both of you, um, even while you two, like before you two are even together. Um, but yeah, the relationship isn't going to start until one of you sort of kind of hits this rock bottom place. And then the other is like helping each other, you know, through that time. And then it sort of blossoms, kind of like I was saying. So yeah, lots of like sparky creative energy, inspiration. There's There might be a lot of like fun, spontaneous things that you do together, especially in the beginning of the relationship. Lots of just spontaneous little ideas, lots of little inspirations and a lot of excitement that just really like lights you up. Um, so yeah. The next two cards, we have the best possible decision and grace. So the best possible decision card, I really think the ending, this is talking about the ending of this other thing. Like you both are going to realize that this was like the best possible decision that could have happened. So even though it might feel like one of you hits rock bottom at a certain point, you're going to realize like, hey, that was actually the best possible scenario to happen. 
because it's leading you to where you're meant to be. It's leading you to your soulmate. You know, and I think there's going to be a lot of support from other people in this. And also it's very interesting. We have these three people. So again, we're getting that sort of lover's triangle again from the beginning, but I don't think it's going to like remain a lover's triangle at all. I do feel like this is going to, you know, culminate into it just being you and your soulmate, obviously. So it's just an, a weird way of meeting each other, I guess. But yeah, it's going to end up being the best possible decision. And I think all of it's going to end up calming down and being something really nice and beautiful. And you won't have to feel like you're stuck in like this dragon's lair anymore. Like it'll feel like, hey, things are finally working out and we're finally getting together and it's going to be very inspiring and very exciting. The next few cards, we have retrograde. <laughs> that makes sense. We also have progressions and ascendant. Okay, so retrograde means that you're going back into something. Retrograde means that we're revising something, reviewing something. Um, so this sort of, to me, represents the energy of maybe going back and forth in the beginning, sort of like, oh, is this like, like, do we want to go here? Do we not want to go here? But yet there's this calling, there's this inspiration, there's this spark leading you towards this person more and more. Um, so yeah, it's like you're, you're constantly going back into this sort of calling, which is this person. You also might be dealing with some of the past when you two first get together. Some of you might be sort of still dealing with a little bit of the past. But yet you're progressing out of that. It's like part of the journey. It's like you're progressing out of that. Whereas in order to get connected, we had to reconnect based on our past based on past experience that's how we like connected and then the progressions it's launching you into your future journey with this person you are progressing into something more um as all of this sort of plays out and then we also have the ascendant card right here so ascendant is our outwards persona and it's also us ascending it's our ascension it's how we rise so right as you're sort of like you know, on the, on this curb, on this line of where we could either progress and ascend or we could go backwards. It's sort of like you two are, you know, deciding to really move forward and rise up together. We're progressing into the future. The past led us towards progressing into the future together. Your, your guys' personalities are also very much meant to be together. And you two are going to be growing together very well. Yeah, I definitely see you two growing, growing together very well and having a very good personality match. And it's interesting, the past is sort of your doorway, is your entrance to your journey together. So with that being said, let's go ahead and find out more information upon what this person might look like. So we're the last part of this reading is going to be kind of discovering possibly what this person looks like, some features. So let's see what we get. So group two, <laughs> lots of attraction. The volcano means hot. Attraction, it's steamy. There's a steamy attraction here. So your person, <laughs> definitely just attractive um to say the least they're also a breath of fresh air so they might be different than your usual type breath of like fresh air reminds me of you know sort of different than what you're used to but yet s steamy they really like turn you on to say the least <laughs> um but yeah they're they're very refreshing it's like a refreshing sort of person we also have fairies of earth magic we also have reflection. This person has a very magical appearance. I think that you can pinpoint this person. They, like, they don't look like everybody else with this earth magic card. Effortless. They also have an effortless beauty to them. I don't think this person puts tons of effort into the way that they look, not all the time at least. They definitely can and Maybe sometimes they do, but for the most part, I feel like they have a more effortless look. They could have very flowing hair for some of you. Um, 
or like a very earthy sort of look to them, which is, you know, a bit more strongly built, um, very earthy, very grounded, it could mean that they're very strong. Um, I feel like this person lets their hair be very natural, just natural like what it is. They don't try to like style it too, too much is what I gather from that one. The reflection card can also mean that they reflect a little bit of your qualities as well. So they, they kind of just look like a perfect reflection for you. They sort of look like a soulmate for you. But I'm definitely gathering a unique, like fresh sort of look. It's unique, but it's fresh. It's not something that everybody does. It's not something how everybody else looks like. And they, again, might be a little bit different than your usual type, but somehow their effortlessness is going to just like be very attractive and like you see really good qualities in them you see them very well um and you two sort of just partner and look really good together so yeah that is what i'm gathering from this that is what spirit has for you and your soulmate here i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope it made sense for you um so if you enjoyed it don't forget to give it a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future and if so i'll see you in my next one bye all right so group number three let's go ahead and hop right into your soulmate twin flame reading all right so group number three here's what we have for you we have the ten of cups the magician and the high priestess the ten of cups is representing you the magician is representing your connection to your soulmate and then the high priestess is your soulmate or twin flame that is the energy that they're coming through as so let's talk about what all of this represents so the ten of cups representing you this i would gather that you are a gentle soul you are somebody who is very kind very sweet, you care so much for other people, you have a lot of love to give, you have a lot of affection, um, you are somebody who is actually very balanced emotionally, I think whether you realize it or not, um, and you, you go deep emotionally, your emotions go very deep, and you want the best out of life, you want the best for you and for another person, so the, honestly just a very kind sweet loving energy comes through when i look at the ten of cups um the high priestess as your person your person might be quite shy <laughs> your soulmate might be quite shy but also might be quite spiritual or at least just very intuitive and very sensitive um, but in a good way, not like sensitive, like they're a crybaby or anything. Like I'm not saying that sort of sensitive, but sensitive in the way where they, they feel things very deeply. Um, and I think because of that, they sort of conceal their emotions or their truest thoughts. But again, not in a bad way, not in like a secretive way, but more of just in like a shy sort of way where they are just a bit more quiet or it, it takes them a longer time to open up to you so i think when you first meet this person it might take them a while to fully reveal who they are to fully you know talk about deep feelings but once you do i mean this person goes very deep i'm getting very like scorpio energy from this even though the high priestess isn't associated with scorpio but for some reason i'm feeling some scorpio energy from that one or it could even be pisces or virgo or cancer is like kind of what the energies that i'm picking up from this card um but yeah this person i think has a tougher time talking about their deeper feelings at first but as you get to know them this person is incredibly deep um they're incredibly loving and caring i think it just takes them a while to fully open their heart because i think they've been through a lot in life and so they don't really you know open up right away this person's also incredibly observant. They like to observe before they speak and they only really ever open up just as much as you do. So as you begin to open up, this person starts to open up more um, because they're really shy and possibly even intimidated by you at first and almost scared that, you know, they don't want to put their heart completely out there because they don't want it to be like fully broken or anything. So they're just more cautious because they don't want to get their heart broken. <laughs> so... I think they sort of wait and observe before taking action and you might need to be the person that makes the first move in this relationship just because they seem a bit more on the shy side. Although since you do come as, 
come in as the Ten of Cups, you might have some like shyness qualities as well. You also might be somebody who, you know, feels emotions very deeply, but it does seem like you're slightly more open than they are when it comes to when you first meet somebody. They're also very attracted to your bubbliness and they're also just very attracted to you in general. This person, like, they get a twinkle in their eye when they see you, like they, you light them up. They're very much like when they see you, all they wanna look at is you, all they want to be around is you because you really sort of like add a little sparkle to, to them and they, they get very enchanted by you. So yeah, that's the word that I get. They get very enchanted by you. They also see you as somebody who has everything that they want in a person. Like when they see you, they're like, wow, you are, completely 10 out of 10, you have 10 out of 10, which is why you're the 10 out of cups, you have 10 out of 10, like that's what they would rate you. <laughs> you have everything that they could desire. It's also very interesting that we have this eye with all of this sort of like, you know, lines coming out. And then here on this card, we have the eye with all these lines coming out towards the cup, and then you are the cup right here. So it's very interesting how this sort of like plays out together. This I'm gathering that they're very drawn to you. They're incredibly drawn to you and they want to build a life with you. They're almost trying to like manifest you into their life. Like when they first see you, when they first meet you, you guys might be meeting online or in person. It's not really super clear on that quite yet, but the magician is ruled by the planet of Mercury and Mercury can resemble that you two are sort of talking through technology at first, like through phones or something, or just communication in general. Some sort of form of communication is the time that you first meet. And that communication, again, could be online or it possibly could be in person. We'll have to like get some more cards to find that out more in depth. But yeah, I'm definitely seeing that this person is maybe a little bit more quiet around you when they first meet you. Your connection is also gonna be very beautiful because this person really only has their eyes on you. They're not a person that's gonna have their eyes wander to anybody else. You fully captivate their entire attention. So your connection with each other is going to be very fun, very beautiful, very progressive in the fact that I think you two are gonna to wanna to progress together a lot in the future. You're gonna have a lot of dreams and goals because the magician talks about manifesting things, you know, making things into tangible reality. This person really, when they, when they meet you, they really wanna make you part of their reality. And they're really hoping for that. They want to draw you in. They want you to feel the same about them as they do about you. And so, you know, they're a bit more patient. This person I think has a lot of patience. They're not, here to rush anything um, and they feel like they could wait for you for a lifetime but they don't obviously don't want to do that they don't want to wait for you for a lifetime but they're very excited about manifesting you into their life um, right when they when they meet you they just they're very drawn to you and they want to draw you in as well and so I think that this person's also going to wait and observe and see you know what kind of person you are um, and see if it's like you know kind of just observe you at first and I don't mean that in a creepy way. I just mean that in a way of like, they want to really get to know you before they make like a huge commitment, but they already feel like your energy and they feel very drawn to you. But then they're just very curious about you. They really want to see you, get to know you and start to open up themselves as well. But again, I do think this person is very patient, but at the same time, they, they really do desire you quite deeply. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get some more cards onto this reading for you. So group three, we also have the five or four of wands coming through. So yeah, this person wants to create a very solid foundation with you. The four of wands also talks about commitments and celebrations as well. So this can also represent weddings, marriages, um, setting a solid foundation together. So I think that you two are also going to, you know, really think about moving in together. Um, and I, I, would, I definitely see possibly weddings and stuff like that too, just because the Four of Wands does represent celebrations. And so I definitely see this leading towards a marriage and towards something that's very long lasting. Um, and you two both desire to have like a very solid committed foundation to each other. Um, so I definitely see that as well. Let's see what else we get here. So 
so group three, more information for group three. We also have the Hierophant. The Hierophant also talks about weddings, churches, things like that. This person might have some sort of like deep belief or maybe even you, but there's some sort of either religious belief or deep spiritual belief because the Hierophant does resemble our belief systems. So I do think that this person has possibly a spiritual background or some sort of religious background of some kind. Whether they follow that anymore, I'm not sure, but they, they do have some sort of religious background. And definitely I see marriage. Hierophant, Four of Wands, the Magician, like there is definitely marriage here, Ten of Cups. Like I see you guys having a family in the in the future as well. We also have the devil card showing up, which is very interesting. So this card deals with attachment. I think that this person, you two will both have a very deep attachment to each other for one. I'm not getting a lot of bad vibes from this card with the devil. Like a lot of the times the devil resembles more of toxic traits, but in terms of your particular pile and your group, I'm not picking up toxic traits from that card. I'm just picking up on the fact of wanting commitment. There's a desire here of really wanting commitment. One of you is going to really desire commitment because maybe you've had relationships in the past that have been very weird around commitment. And so there might be sort of like just a deep desire to have and solidify some sort of commitment in this relationship. Like there might be some sort of insecurity from the past that's causing either one of you to be scared of losing the other or be scared of getting hurt. There's maybe like a fear of getting hurt or a fear of losing the other person. I do think that that'll heal over time though because especially since the next card that we have is um, the Ace of Cups here. So yeah, I definitely see that that's going to be healed at some point. We do also have the Tower as well and also the King of Wands. So yeah, there's definitely a fear of things falling apart. Like this person does not want to lose you and I think you feel the same way about them as well. Like there's this energy here of not wanting to lose each other so yeah and i see it more of coming out slightly in a healthier way although usually insecurities and fears are things that we do need to work through because they're they're not super healthy but at the same time i don't see this one being very bad like i don't see it being super intense but i do see you know needing to work through certain fears and i think that as you two get together you're breaking free from old patterns like i see this, this sort of um, fear, this sort of attachment and fear from the past is going to be breaking, you're going to be breaking free from it and they are going to be breaking free from it. So I do see being able to break free from unhealthy habits or patterns um, as you guys meet each other because the love, I think, and you know how this relationship is going to progress is going to help e either of you kind of like break free out of this sort of bondage from your past, out of this sort of trigger from your past. So yeah, I definitely see you two breaking free of old habits or patterns from your past and being able to sort of heal from that. Um, the King of Wands here is a lot of passion. So I do see a lot of passion between both of you a lot of attraction as well. The King of Wands does resemble attraction, excitement. I think love is going to develop pretty fast between you two. You two are going to fall in love quite quickly and really begin to heal each other. Like you two together are going to really heal each other's like previous, you know, wounds and things like that because of the love that you two build together is going to be so different than I think anything you've ever experienced before. And it's going to be something that's solid. It's not like a passion that's, you know, very quick and then just puffs out or sparks out. Because you know how sometimes like passions that are super quick, they end also super quick. I think you two are building something that's very strong and very powerful. And as you two begin to really build that more, all of this is going to slowly break apart and fall away. So with that being said, let's get into the next few cards that we have. 
So we have the card of magic prayer. And then we also have the card here of rescue. So wow, actually both of those are incredibly fitting. <laughs> so magical prayer. So I feel like you both are almost like wishing for each other. And both of you are sort of making this connection spiritually before it actually manifests physically. And that's probably why we also have the magician. I think both of you are sort of imagining, you know, meeting your perfect partner before it actually happens. And both of you are kind of like manifesting this energy, visualizing, you know, what you want to attract in your life, the person that you want to attract. So both of you are sort of putting out this energy and both of you might begin to have sort of weird synchronicities or dreams before meeting this person. We also do have the rescue card. So again, there's sort of this energy here around healing the past. It's almost like this relationship is healing and rescuing you from your previous experiences that you've had that both of you have had, like both of you have had some interesting experiences around love, especially them. I'm picking up, especially them. They've had some like harder experiences around love and the love that you provide is very much going to heal them. Again, that could be flip-flopped as well, but I'm just picking up. It's mostly them. And, uh, yeah, the love that you provide since you're such a balanced person and you're very loving. And I pick up that you're just a very honest, sincere, sweet person it is going to sort of heal their, their previous stuff. I also feel like they're very sweet and very caring as well, but they've been walked all over before. So they have a couple of fears that need to be sort of worked out. So the next two cards, we have the card here of boundaries and then we have the card of clarity. So this person might have certain walls up at first, but yet they want to break them down with you. They want to break free of their walls. So as you two get to know each other more and more, those boundaries will begin to fall apart. Those walls will begin to fall apart. You're going to get to know them much more um, as this progresses. And again, clarity comes. So as you kind of like break through these boundaries by, you know, falling in love more and more and beginning to open up more and more and show them this love, it's kind of like, again, their boundaries are falling apart and then you get more clarity about who they are and you're going to see them more and more, you know, um, so yeah, they're going to let you into their world more and more as time progresses. And again, I do see this leading towards marriage and something very long lasting. So the next two cards, we have passion and we also have health. So yeah, I mean, this card's self-explanatory, tons of passion in this relationship. I think there's a huge attraction between both of you with this card. Um, Health could also be another interesting aspect of this, but maybe also both of you desire to create something very healthy together and both of you don't want to experience, you know, unhealthy things, toxic things, because maybe, you know, we're aware of those things and we don't want to experience them anymore because we've, we've had, you know, past experiences that might have had that before. And so this person is very much focused on like wanting to create something healthy. And yeah, I think it's going to move more and more towards a very healthy, loving relationship as this person, you know, learns to open up more. <laughs> All right, so then the next three cards that we have, we have the eighth house of mystery. This makes total sense coming up for you because um, the eighth house is very mysterious. So this person is quite mysterious at first, you know, they don't let, they don't let on too much right away, but the eighth house also deals with endings and beginnings. So they've had, I think, a, a harder past with relationships with certain endings and beginnings. And so they sort of don't open up right away. This, de this is definitely a more mysterious, sort of aloof kind of person. Um, but I think because of that, there's also a huge amount of attraction because the eighth house is also where passion is. So there's tons of passion between you and this person and I also think that at first you don't even realize how much passion is here how much love is actually here but I think that's going to surface through certain experiences that you two have together um, we'll start to sort of uncover this more and more about how much love and how much connection and passion is really here 
So that's going to slowly begin to reveal itself more and more as this relationship progresses. This can also mean that spiciness, I'm just saying spiciness, the Scorpio energy with passion, I'm just saying spiciness um, in a good way, good spice. Uh, then we also have Leo right here. So yeah, slowly as this relationship progresses, it's going to get more and more open and more and more seen. Like this person's going to open up more to you as this relationship progresses. I just think that this person is kind of like, again, scared of getting hurt. Uh, and they want to be more of an observer at first to sort of see who you are. Um, this person also does not like conflict. They don't want to be in conflict. So they're very much an observer first to sort of see who you are, where your boundaries are, to sort of get a clear view of you. And once they have a clear view of you, they know how they want to approach you. They know how they want to communicate with you because this person really is avoidant when it comes to like arguments. They don't mind having, you know, disagreements and conversations, but they'd rather know who you are first so they know how to approach you and they know how to approach certain situations. But again, as this progresses, this is going to start to be more and more open and more and more in the spotlight together to where you two have so much clarity over each other and you two know each other very deeply and very well. So I do see this progressing a little bit slowly at first just because of like the amount of like mystery and sort of like keeping up certain walls. So it might progress slowly at first in terms of how you two get to know each other, but there is so much clarity that is coming along as this progresses. You two might also have certain different belief systems that you do need to work out eventually that you might see, but I don't see you you working out them in a bad way. I see them working out in more of a good way because you two will learn sort of how each other is and how each other operates. And I do think that this is going to, all of your oppositions are going to be healthy. You're going to have healthy, you know, communication. Whenever you two differ on something, I think it's going to come out in a very healthy way and be spoken about in a very healthy way. And then the last three cards, we have time for a nap. Um, this card, I feel like, yeah, you two are showing up in each other's dreams for some reason before you meet each other. I also think that this relationship is going to require a little bit of patience with each other, especially with getting to know each other. So this isn't going to be rushed because this person isn't like a rushing type but it is leading to something very solid. This person wants very solid commitment, but they're not trying to rush anything. This person might seem very aloof at times or very avoidant. This person, I think, avoids conflict at all costs. Um, and they might come across very aloof or very like, um, yeah. There's just a, a, an interesting energy with them at first because again, I think this person's very cautious over their heart um so there might be times where this person maybe you two go for a time without talking in the beginning when you first are getting to know this person there might be a time where you two are not talking there might be a pause in this relationship before you know this actually progresses into something more because i think you're going to realize like how much you really love each other um this can also sometimes mean that there's a little bit of distance between you two sometimes and then chop wood. This is about putting effort in, putting the work in. So I think you two are going to realize how much you are meant for each other. And this relationship, you two are going to constantly kind of come back to each other and be like, wow, like we really want to put the effort in for this. We really want to do this. And eventually it's going to lead to um, deeper commitments. But maybe at first there's one of you that might be scared of commitment a little bit. Um, and then realize like, wow, I, can't, I just can't be without this person. Like I have to, I just have to be with them. And then it's going to, I think, progress quite quickly after that. But at first it's a little bit slow and maybe there might be a little bit of a break or a pause in the beginning. 
But yeah, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and shuffle these cards and try to get a little bit about how this person looks, what they look like. Oh, we also have dream time. So lots of dream cards. You are definitely in this person dream, this person's dreams, and they're going to be in yours quite a bit. Um, also, you're really manifesting each other. You're, as you dream about like your fantasy person, you're creating them like, and drawing them into your life. We have fairies, earth magic, lots of magical cards. We have magician, we have earth magic. We have all these creation cards. Ooh, we also have two passion cards. There's tons of passion between you two. Yeah, tons of passion here. Um, in terms of the way this person looks, you're going to be incredibly at attracted to them. They're almost like your dream creation. <laughs> in terms of the way that they look. Yeah, they're like your dream creation. Yeah, and it's gonna be very magical. They have a magical appearance to them almost, maybe like a fantasy character almost. Let's see what else we get for you in terms of the way your partner, your soulmate is going to look veiled. So you might not see like a lot of them at first. Veiled is very interesting. This person definitely holds themselves more cautious. Um, and they might also wear clothing to where you don't really know like tons of like maybe what they look like or um, they might wear a lot of makeup or yeah, there's it's veiled in some way. You know, maybe they wear like more possibly like loose clothing or they don't try to like show themselves off too much because they're a little bit more shy, but yet they're very sexy. <laughs> um, let's see what else we can get here. We also have DNA karma. Wow, so this person is definitely going to be your type, to say the least. It's not being very particular about how exactly this person looks. A lot of the times these cards are like very particular around like either eye color, what their hair is like, chiseled jawline, stuff like that. But the, these ones just have not wanting, are not wanting to be like uber specific today. Um, but all I can say is this person's definitely going to be your type. They're going to be very attractive. It's almost like your dream creation of a person. Their genetics, it's almost like they got like the genetic win because DNA right here, it's like they got the genetic, like, I don't know, gift <laughs> where they just look very nice and they're just like your dream sort of person. So they're being very particular on the fact that you're going to be very attracted to this person. Okay, so that is something I see here. Um, they might also have lots of hair just because veiled can maybe mean like the veil. They have lots of hair or something. Or again, maybe they, may, they, they gussy themselves up a lot, something like that. So that is what I'm gathering from this. I'm also get, getting some sort of like fantasy. They look maybe like a fantasy character. So yeah, that is what we have here for you. Group number three. I hope you enjoyed this read. Also, sorry, the camera just cut out. <laughs> we just reached like 30 minutes of recording, but I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future, and I hope to see you there. Bye. All right, so group number four, if you chose this pile, this is going to be a reading all about your soulmate or twin flame, so let's get started. All right, so group number four, here's what we have for you. So we have the King of Swords, the Page of Swords, and the Knight of Wands. The King of Swords is representing you. The um, Page of Swords is representing your connection between this, you and this person. And then the Knight of Wands is representing your soulmate or twin flame. So let's talk about it. The King of Swords representing you, I would say that by the time you meet this person or around the time that you're about to meet this person, you are really stepping into your power you are really stepping into knowing what exactly it is you want, having clarity on your life and your direction in life. And I also see you becoming really good at like communicating and being very open and honest and knowing your boundaries. I also see you having like recently cut away um, toxic things from your life. I think that right when you meet your soulmate is 
the same time that you just really put your foot down and cut away lots of toxic habits, toxic people, like things in your life that just don't serve you and you're really sticking to certain boundaries and just again, having clarity on what it is that you want. I think you're gonna have a very clear direction on where you're going and what you desire to experience in your life around the time that you meet your person. Your person showing up as the Knight of Wands, this energy I find like humorous, fun, exciting. This person has like a little lightning bolt in them. Um, so I see this, like this person's excited about life to say the least. Your soulmate I think is very spontaneous. They enjoy humor. They enjoy having fun. They are very directional. They know the direction that they're going in their life and they're very inspired. I think this person's very energetic and they have a lot of energy. I'm almost picking up on the fact that your person might be slightly younger than you, um, for those of you that are watching this, or just have more of a youthful energy. It doesn't mean that they're like necessarily younger. They can be though. Um, or they just have this sort of youthful, free kind of energy and getting a, a very free vibe from this person. Um, and with you, I, I also get this like spontaneous aspect where you like to get excited about life but you're also very intellectual at the same time like you like to have mental stimulation your person is very adventurous and enjoys more of physical stimulation whereas you are much more like mental stimulation but either either way i do think that you two get along very well and you two really enjoy laughing together like this person really makes you laugh because your connection is showing up as the page of swords this person brings out your, your youthful energy versus right before you meet them i think that you're getting into the energy where you feel very mature and more serious about life this person brings out your fun side and again this also could be flip-flop so this could actually represent them and this could be you for example so it could be flip-flopped again it is a general reading but this person brings out your fun side they bring out your youthful side they bring out your humorous side like it's very playful you two have a very playful relationship together where you two are kind of just like giggling in the background i'm almost seeing that you two sort of play the game where you like make stories about you know like for example you people watch and make like little stories like ooh, this person and this and like this 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 like you two have fun intellectually there's a lot of mental stimulation where you two are just sort of like you like to observe life and talk about life and and have fun with life and sort of just be humorous and be playful. There's a, a huge playful energy between you two. And I think one of the strongest attracting factors between you two is this sort of mental playfulness that you two have. So like making jokes about each other, making jokes about life, making jokes about like, like the way you two pronounce words or say certain things. Like I also see you two just having fun with the way that you talk to each other, having fun with maybe like doing accents or doing like funny, just little things with communication because your main connection factor here is communication and it's showing up as the page, which is again, the very youthful energy. And it's very fun and very playful and very lively and energetic. You know, we're not just sitting down having just serious talks with our tea or whatever. We're having fun with it, you know? We're like we have those moments and we can have those moments but at the same time i just see this humorous fun playful energy coming out and i'm also getting this vision that even when you two are really old and elderly you're still gonna be that elderly couple that's like just having fun and laughing like little kids even when you're much older so i just i just really see that energy between you two just this really fun playful kind of energy your partner also really enjoys being adventurous and traveling like your person likes living an active lifestyle i see them being very active um possibly even outdoorsy in terms of maybe hikes or traveling or wanting to travel um and stuff like that just because they're they're like an explorer free spirit type of energy and i think that they bring out a little bit of that within you as well um but you are a person where I think you could go either or. You could be like chill and relax or you could be adventurous. You're sort of like, you could do both, you know? I'm also really noticing how this sword here lights up and it has this like beam coming out of it. I think that you two light each other up. Like when you're in each other's presence, you two light up. And this person really lights you up and gets you feeling very sort of like fiery and fun. 
and you really spark up this person as well and you get this person being more intellectual whereas this person is a lot of the times more um either visual based or more about like physical activity you bring out the intellectual side in this person this person has a lot of fun with you doing that like a lot of fun so you two bring out this beautiful balance with each other whereas you know this person has that fun playful side and you have the intellectual and then it marries between both of you where now it's a beautiful fun intellectual kind of like blossoming moment because you two marry both of those fun energies together and it ends up blossoming into something very beautiful also i wouldn't be surprised if you two meet online most likely just because we have the page of swords showing up as your connection card that can also resemble that we meet each other online since the swords are a communication which can mean texting it can mean social media um but it can also be like invites so invites somewhere it could also be a, a way that you two meet and build your connection so that is what we have there we're also going to go ahead and shuffle some more tarot cards to get some more information on this reading for you so let's get some more we have strength coming through so that's all about commitments and also about just a very strong connection in general it can also mean that you both um are very strong around each other and very patient with each other like whenever there's something going on both of you are very open ears and you don't just like blurt out what you're trying to say when you're having like you know a discussion about something or a debate about something it's more like you remain patient because you respect and want to hear what the other person has to say and so you kind of you know restrain yourself at first to kind of hear them out before speaking yourself and it's sort of this nice balance um between each other also strength is uh, represented closely to leo and the sun so this is also about being in the spotlight so i think that you two really allow each other to enter the spotlight together because you two enjoy having that balance and you want to see like you want to uplift your person and they want to uplift you they want to see you at your best and you want to see them at their best really um but there's also a lot of patience around each other as well so yeah you feel like giving this person time and you want to build something healthy and strong and i think this person also feels the same way of, of desiring to build something healthy and strong and strength can also be about commitment as well so building something that's like a strong commitment and i also just see a very strong connection like i'm seeing a very strong connection between you two that's the word that keeps coming to my head strong connection and i think as you two get to know each other more and as you two like build because you two are building like a friendship as your sort of base relationship i see this being very long lasting like this is something that's long lasting you're building something that's long lasting with this person it's going to last a long time so yeah and also if we look at this card it's like this shrine on a pedestal right so you two both think very highly of each other and you both see each other very highly and you two want to uplift each other um and you're not interested in tear in tearing each other down you really want to uplift each other so i think that is the foundation of a very beautiful relationship like you two are going to build a very strong foundation where you two can shine we also have the hierophant coming through the hierophant talks about marriage we also have the tower coming through. So I think you two are also going to break down some of your old barriers and belief systems. I see the tower being a very good thing between you two. Um and the hero fit talks about marriage, it talks about um <laughs> taking vows to each other. So I wouldn't be surprised if you two get married. That card has been showing up quite a bit in these readings so far. So it looks like a lot of people are lucky in terms of getting married. Um but yeah, hero fit can definitely represent that. It can also sometimes represent that we have a certain belief system and our belief systems align up very well. Um but since we have tower too, we might even be breaking out of certain old belief systems together and creating new ones. Maybe we're finding ourselves breaking out of certain old molds that we had or old values and kind of like creating new ones together. But I do think you two have very similar 
values to where you two get along very well, but then there's also this openness to transformation that you have. So I think the tower is actually a very good thing because I think you both have experienced negative relationships that haven't been strong in the past and now you two are sort of realizing what it takes to build a strong relationship. There could have even been a time in your relationship with this person or there might be a time where you two might have a sort of maybe falling out, maybe, and I'm not saying this is for all of you, this is just for possibly some of you, there might be this moment of a falling out, but it's because we realize maybe we need to build a stronger foundation together, but you two are still, you know, coming together in the end. I do see you being with this person. I want to make that clear. I see like marriage here. So the tower, I think that you guys get through tough moments together because you realize, okay, we just need a stronger foundation. It's going to take strength to make this work. And I think both of you have the mindset of wanting to do that and wanting to make it work and get through things um, together. I just see like a, a beautiful commitment between you two. Let's see if we can get maybe one or two more cards here. I'm kind of feeling, no, it's not wanting to come out. Okay, let's see. Spirit, one or two more cards to explain the connection here. We have the Ace of Pentacles. So yeah, something very solid. I definitely see solidity between you two and building a strong foundation and also Queen of Wands. So you two are, are there's a spark here, an undeniable spark that's going to cause you two to both desire to commit to one another. And there's just a fun zest between you two that you have not found anywhere else. There's this understanding between you two and this this merging of sort of spiritual beliefs or values that you two are kind of creating together that are very unique to you, to you too, to both of you. Um, but yeah, I definitely see a zest coming out, a beautiful zest of life in this desire to build a strong foundation. Again, it keeps repeating strong foundation, strong foundation. And that anything that's not built on a strong foundation, you two are going to sort of like fix um, to make it strong. Because both of you have this same goal, the same desire to have something that's long lasting. And I do think your relationship is going to develop to becoming more and more fun as you go along. Like you two are keeping the fun alive in your relationship, which I think is also another factor to why your relationship is going to be so successful is because you two are really making it fun, making it playful. So with that being said, the next two cards that we have here, we have home and we have magic stream. Ooh, these are some beautiful cards. So with the home card, I would not be surprised if you two move in together um, sometime soon after meeting each other just because we have the home card. Um, also, I think that you two might be buying a home together because the Ace of Pentacles with the home card, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you two invest in an actual home together and buy one. Um, I also think that this card represents the emotion of feeling at home with one another. Like you two both feel at home when you're in each other's presence. Also, something might happen at some point where one of you maybe doesn't have a home at some point because we do have the tower here with the home card and the ace of pentacles and this is somehow making me feel that possibly and again this is a general reading so maybe not all of the things are going to be you know exactly as they are but for some reason i'm sort of picking up on an energy that there might be a situation where one of you like needs needs a home or needs a place to stay or there is some sort of scenario where one of you might be moving or something like there's something around home life that just causes this transition for you two to live together it might not be that one of you is like homeless i'm not like picking up on that but there's just some sort of scenario where home life is shifting and changing and then that causes you two to decide like oh hey well it's now or never we might as well move in together so yeah, I'm sort of picking up on that energy. Magic stream. So things are just like flowing. They're taking you to where you need to go. 
there's some sort of like magical energy here that's bringing you two together and it's very serendipitous. So as you two sort of meet and as your relationship progresses, it almost just seems like the universe is bringing you together through like this magical sort of like, I don't know, being at the right place at the right time, all of a sudden randomly meeting each other, knowing the right people. It's just like streams are just leading you two to be together. So no matter how much you guys, you know, try to avoid it or anything, it's just like, it's somehow just happening because you two belong together. You two are just like, you're meant to have a home together. You're meant to be together. So this sort of magical stream of universe is just constantly bringing you two together because this is a connection that's supposed to happen. It's supposed to it's supposed to occur and it's very interesting that both of these numbers equal a nine right here which talk about the closing out of an old chapter so somehow the universe is also causing you to close out an old chapter of your life so that you can really settle down with this person and really begin your foundation with this person so with that being said, the next few cards or next couple of cards, we have the crossroads. Ooh, that one's interesting. And also spirit guides. Ooh, okay. So yeah, I mean, spirit is definitely, your two, your guys' spirit guides actually, I think are connected before you two even know each other. You have spirit guides that are already in communication that are causing certain circumstances to happen so that you two meet because you two are meant to meet. Um, and so they're causing these certain crossroads to happen your spirit guides are literally conspiring to create the right pathway so that you two cross paths, so that you constantly have these crossroads. And so even if they're, maybe you two meet at some point and then you don't see each other for a long time again afterwards and then all of a sudden see each other again, like you're, you're constantly crossing paths with this person. It's almost like it's inevitable that you're supposed to be with them because you're constantly sort of causing, crossing paths with them. Um, so yeah, and maybe you even meet in just, again, a very synchronistic sort of magical way where it's like you two just crossed paths and it was like inevitable. At that point, it's just like you had to be together because it was inevitable. You met this person who's just like, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and anytime, if, if you two ever do get like ever lost, it's kind of like you just come back to each other. There's this energy here that's just bringing you back to this person and your spirit guides are very much conspiring in this because your spirit guides are like, yo, you're supposed to be together. So what can we do to make them cross paths? And your spirit guides are like talking to their spirit guides like, okay, well, this person's going to go here at this time and we can make this happen here so that they cross paths here at this exact moment. And so it's like, really, this is all just meant to happen. And it's unavoidable. I keep hearing the word like unavoidable. You're meant to be with this person. You're meant to find this person. So next two roads, we have safe travel and organization. Oh my God, this card, you guys, the organization is also making me think about your spirit guides organizing or orchestrating events to where you two just inevitably meet each other. Safe travel, there also could be distance between you two at first, possibly. But this can also just talk about maybe you two have a passion for exploring. As I was saying, this person has a passion for exploring. But the two and the two, this reminds me of the connection between you two because twos are all about commitment or meeting somebody, um, the connection between two people, right? And together equals a four, which is a solid foundation. So the 22, <laughs> we have the two over here as well. Lots of two energy. Um, so you two are meant to meet each other. There's going to be this desire for adventure, yes. And I think this card does allude to the fact that there's a desire for adventure. But at the same time, it's almost like you two, the chances of meeting seem so slim, but at the same time, it just was like orchestrated and it was impossible to not meet each other because your paths just crossed, your spirit guides caused this to happen. It's inevitable, no matter how hard you try to maybe be away from this person, which I don't think that you'll be trying hard to because I think that there's a great attraction here. So I don't think that you're ever gonna try to not be with this person, but inevitably, it just seems like you two are going to keep crossing paths. <laughs> it's, it's like meant to be, it's just meant to be. Um, so the next few cards, we have Pallas Athena, which is the think, um, it's like an asteroid. And then we also have the 10th house, 
And then Aquarius, ooh. So I definitely think you're meeting online somehow or through unorthodox events because Aquarius is very unorthodox, unexpected, or it's, it deals with technology. So again, like social media, things like that. Um, and then the think card, which is kind of about the mind. This is definitely meeting through some form of like communication. And I'm also picking up on like, again, like serendipitous events that make you constantly think like, huh? And then you also feel like you cannot get this person off your mind and they can't get you off their mind. Like once you meet this person, both of you are just constantly thinking about each other. And the 10th house talks about commitments. It is the Capricorn energy. It is climbing the mountain to get to a goal. So you might re might find that your connection with this person takes some takes a little bit of effort because maybe there's either distance or there's just other events happening that maybe it's like something that we need to work for a little bit but it's so worth it and you two are going to be together in the end and it's going to work out and it's going to happen um it's like the crossroads of destiny it's somehow the crossroads of destiny here so the next few cards we have a leg up this person's willing to put in the effort and I think you're willing to put in the effort too. Like this very much like, let's help each other out. Let's make this work. It's going to take a little bit of work somehow because I think circumstances in the beginning, there's somehow like, I don't know, maybe a living situation that you two need to work out just because maybe you two live, you know, farther apart from each other um, or like something like that. So... It's going to require like some sort of effort in the beginning, but I think both of you are very much willing to put in that effort. Then we also have between worlds. So yeah, I'm getting distance here too. Or just that you two are just from completely different backgrounds. You two might be from culturally different backgrounds. You might be culturally different. This person might be from another country. But it's like inevitably you're supposed to be together and there's a lot of effort that's being put in. Also... Oh my god. Also, the fact we have the 18th, there's so many synchronistic number. Like, you can look at this reading right here and find a lot of numerological correlations between all the numbers going on here. But also 18 and 18, which is the number 9, the closing out of the chapter. And also, I kept using the word serendipity in this reading, and I just cannot believe we actually have the card of serendipity in this reading because that's a word that I think I um, actually mentioned earlier on. So, wow. Um, Yes, it's almost like luck is on your side with this person. Like there's just a lot of luck and a lot of synchronistic events that maybe felt like they shouldn't have happened, but for some reason they just did. Like this could even be like technology working wrong and then all of a sudden you two somehow start talking because the technology was all wonky and then all of a sudden it's just like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's just serendipitous events, weird events that seem like a one in a million chance and you two end up knowing each other and it ends up being like the perfect person for you so yeah <laughs> all this good luck and i think there's also going to you're going to notice a lot of signs and synchronicities like numbers might be a thing for you too because we have all these number correlations happening over here so numbers might be a thing that pop up for you a lot or certain other signs or synchronicities that pop up like four leaf clovers, like music, like certain signs that just keep popping up when you're around this person or when you're about to meet them. It's like all these things, all these synchronistic things start happening because the energy is so strong between you two and, and it's very divinely guided. Like your spirit guides are, are guiding this connection to come to fruition, to happen. So yeah, lots of synchronicities, lots of serendipitous, unexplainable events that bring you two together. Very nice, very beautiful. And again, you two are both very willing to put in the effort to this scenario. So with that being said, let's go ahead and shuffle these cards. We're gonna try to find out um, about this person's looks. So a little bit into maybe what they look like. Ancestors, generations. This person might have um, an old soul, like they feel like they have an old soul. 
They also might have some sort of historic look to them for some reason. Not that they look old, but like, um, I don't know, they just look timeless. They have a timeless look to them. They also seem like they're very activated because this kundalini um, swimming through these hands, this person seems very activated. They also might have very unique hands is something that I'm also gathering. Um, or they might use their hands a lot in whatever they work as. Also, we got some other cards flying out here. We have a nurturing and activation. So the wind card is making me feel like this person has very unique hair possibly because the wind is making me think about hair, um, the way it might blow in the wind or something. I don't know, but that one made me think of hair. They might have very unique hair um, and their hands might be something that's very prominent. Also this nurturing card, they have a very naturally beautiful look to them. It's almost like mother earth made them perfectly. Like you look at this person, you're like, oh yes. Perfect. Perfection. Chef's kiss. So yeah, they. I think that they have a very beautiful, natural look. Let's see if we can get any other cards here about the aesthetic and appearance of this person. Effortless. Yeah, so they have an effortless appearance as well. I don't think that this person needs to put a lot of effort in. In fact, most of the time they probably don't put tons of effort into the way that they look. Doesn't mean that they never do, but they might not always. They might just have an effortlessly natural, beautiful look. Um, they also might have windswept hair, like sort of just natural hair, like when they wake up that just looks really good. Um, the, I think this person also doesn't know how attractive they are. They try to like maybe hide themselves a little bit. I think that they feel a bit insecure about the way that they look for some reason, but yet you find them very effortlessly, like naturally beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's also another thing that we're gathering over here for the way that they look. Waterfall is also making me think of hair for some reason. I don't know, just a, big, a very natural kind of look but again yeah there's definitely they possibly feel kind of insecure about their looks for some reason and you're just like but why <laughs> I think you look gorgeous so um yeah that's what we have here for you group number four this is all about your person so I hope you enjoyed this video also my camera is going to cut out so I'm going to quickly restart it but yeah, that is what we had here for you, for your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, um, also, okay, another thing that I'm gathering, this person's totally from a different culture. I just want to quickly add that in. Between worlds and then ancestors, I know I said it with this card, but I feel like this one kind of confirms it. Like they have a cultural essence to them that might be different than yours. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just felt like saying that. So yeah, that's what we have here for you. Group number uh, four. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And I hope to see you there. Bye. All right. So group number five, if you chose this group, this is going to be your reading all about your twin flame or soulmate. So let's hop right into it. All right, so group number five, here's what we have for you. Um, this card over here represents you, which is the emperor. Then we also have the death card that represents your connection between you and this person. I also want you guys to know that this is actually a really good card, so don't worry about it. Um, and then over here, this is representing your person. For some reason, we had two cards come out for you, so your person wanted to be represented by two different cards. Um, so we just kind of went with it. So we have the Ten of Pentacles and the Hierophant to represent your person. So what I'm gathering from this, let's start by talking about you. The emperor representing you, I think by the time you meet your soulmate, you are going to be really rising up in terms of your career, your confidence, your self-worth, just honestly everything. The emperor is a, is a more masculine energy, so when I look at this, it seems like you're taking more action in your life than you ever have before. You're moving ahead in life more than you ever have before. This um, 
card is represented by Aries, which is that Mars type of energy, um, but it's very associated with Aries, which means that I think you are going to be at a very new chapter of your life, either beginning something new in terms of career or beginning something new in your life, just like entering a new chapter. Like maybe you moved, for example, um, especially since this is the fourth, uh, fourth card of the major arcana, this can deal with your foundation. So your foundation is shifting. You've just created a brand new foundation for yourself. Maybe you opened up a business for the first time or you're going through a big career shift or you're starting a new chapter in your personal life. But either way, I do think that you are feeling more confident than you ever have and you're at, you've reached more success than you ever have in your life before. And you're more sure of yourself. You've created a very proper, solid foundation to, for yourself where you feel very independent and very good. So I think that you're going to meet your soulmate when you're at a place of, of um, high independence and just honestly feeling really good about yourself. So you are going to meet your soulmate when you're at this point in your life. And then we also have the death card to represent, you know, the connection between you and your person. So this also represents going through a chapter and welcoming in a new phase of your life. So I think both you and your partner are kind of entering new phases of your life. And I think that you both are going to be quite mature and quite successful, especially since they're represented by first the 10 of pentacles. The 10 of pentacles energy is somebody who's incredibly successful, especially in career. They probably have their life already fully figured out. They know who they are. They're, they know their direction. They might even own a house already by the time you meet them, uh, just because the 10 of pentacles can be associated with property and and having a lot of investments already. So this person I think is very invested into themselves, into their life already. Um, again, I do think that they possibly already own their house or they just might already be just super established in their career and in their personal life by the time you meet them. They're just a very established person and they've opened up a brand new chapter for themselves and they're feeling really good. This person's very confident in themselves the fact that we also have the hero fence showing up for them as well, this person has a very strong set of values and they very much know who they are and they've worked on themselves a lot at this point. They've worked through a lot. They've figured out what they value in life and they don't falter on their values. They have a very strong set of values at this point. I'm almost picking up that this person has like such strong values and they might not like drink or like smoke or anything like that. I feel like this person might have strong values to the point where they they try to keep themselves as clean as possible. Um, yeah, for some reason, that's like another thing I'm picking up here. Again, it is a general reading, so I'm just pointing out all the different things I'm seeing. Some of them might fit perfectly and some of them, you know, you take them with a grain of salt. But most of the, the most um, prominent thing that I'm trying to say about this person is that they just have a very strong set of values that they live by on a very particular lifestyle that they live by. And I think it's going to fit along with you perfectly because you are entering a phase in your life where now you are becoming like that too, where you're having a very strong set of values. You know who you are. You have are setting like a really strong foundation for yourself. This person already has like a super strong foundation, super strong values. I think this is a very committed person who's looking for deep commitment in their life. And they are trying to be very correct. You know, they're not trying to live their life all over the place and, you know, get into a mess. This person is not the type of person that you'd find getting into a mess at all. <laughs> just because this person just is so aware. I think this person is so aware about what actions lead where. And they're very conscious of the actions that they take in their life and what they are willing to do and who they're willing to be versus who they're not willing to be. This person's already done those, you know, younger things in life. They've already done all of that. And they're not looking to go into that direction anymore. This person's looking for something solid. They want solidity in their life. They want surety, security, um, financial success, financial freedom. And I think by the time you meet this person, they do seem very financially free, but they also are very smart with their savings. And I do think they're very invested into themselves and into their future. So... Yeah, I'm definitely seeing that side of them as well. This person's also very smart. Like they've just, they've seen a lot in their life and they might've had to deal with a lot already, you know, growing up and they've seen them, their friends go through lots of certain things and they've just kind of 
adjusted themselves to be the best version of themselves and they want to be the best that they can be for you too they're really preparing themselves for a partner so before you even meet this person this person is preparing themselves to settle down this person is preparing themselves to to have commitment and solidity in their life they're not looking to just like live their life being all like like i just don't care and i don't care about the consequences of my actions this person's very aware about consequences of actions so this person doesn't just you know throw everything away for one small good time this person's like i want to build a solid future where my entire future is a good time not just one single moment <laughs> so this person's again very committed they have a very strong value system they might also have a very strong belief system as well when it comes to possibly religion or maybe even spirituality of some kind this person's very um strong in whatever they believe so yeah this person does have some core values either in spirituality or some sort of religion so yeah definitely picking up on that as well and i think the reason why they're going to be so attracted to you is because you two seem like you're very much on the same level like i think you are just stepping into your emperor zone and this person's kind of like i don't know they've been in here for maybe a couple more years but <laughs> um, you're both very equal you're both extremely equal when it comes to your establishment in life so far and I think that's one of the reasons why you two are very attracted to each other because you're very much equal like it doesn't this person doesn't feel like they have to support you in any way and you don't feel like you have to support them in any way you two can just love each other freely and openly because you two have already established who you are like you don't need somebody to help you you're not looking for somebody to be your backbone. You're just looking for somebody to now enjoy life with where you two can just support each other with the foundations that you've already successfully created. So I do think by the time you meet your soulmate, you two are also going to be are already, sorry, already going to be very successful um, at a and at a mature place in your life. And I think that you two have both come through some incredible transformation where you two have maybe ended big chapters of your life before you meet each other and that's why we have the death card because you two have both ended you know old chapters those have closed out we've fully ended um and we've had our ego deaths already i'm also seeing this as like we've both had our ego deaths at this point so we're not looking for our ego to be polished we're not looking to show off we're not looking to um you know <laughs> like attain something crazy because we, we've just like already attained our dreams we've already attained our goals and now we're just looking to attain our dream partner and i think that's why you two are such a beautiful match and such soulmates and twin flames because you're very much on the same page very much established and um yeah i'm almost i wouldn't be surprised if you two meet through your career as well just because the emperor and the ten of pentacles you two might meet via career or via your values and beliefs somehow so yeah, that's another thing I'm picking up on. Also, it's very interesting that we have the Emperor, which is very Mars masculine energy. And then we also have the Copper that you chose because Copper is masculine energy as well. So um, interesting. I think that whoever is the masculine one in this relationship is going to be the one to make the first moves here, um, most likely. And also this relationship is very much action-oriented. Like we... we know and we're very sure of the direction we're going in it's very committed as well ten of pentacles there's lots of commitment here and this person is ready to commit they've already gone through all the things in their life they're not unsure about what they want you're not unsure about what you want i think right when you meet each other it's kind of like okay you're exactly what i want you're exactly what i want then yeah i mean it's a no-brainer like this is commitment this is it let's take action towards the future and i think that there's just a lot of solidity here tons of solidity the Hierophant does also deal with marriage, and I do want to point that out. We've had the Hierophant popping up on so many groups so far, and every time it's just like, it means marriage because it's a church, right? And and usually churches are very associated with marriage. It's where you, you know, take your vows and stuff, and I know not everybody does that because not everybody is religious, but either way, like a Hierophant is also kind of like an officiant, so um, I'm also gathering from this that this person's very much ready for marriage. They're not looking 
for a temporary good time. They're not looking for a temporary fling. This person is not into flings. This person is like, I am ready for my life partner. And if you're not my life partner, then get out of my life because I don't want to waste my time. This person's at a place in their life where they've already established everything and now they just want their, their dream life partner. And so this person is very much ready for commitment. And I think that they're only looking for commitment at this point in their life um, because they're just, they're ready for marriage and they're ready for that point in their life. So yeah, that's another thing I'm definitely noticing there. Um, yeah. And this person is also like, they've already ended all the things. I think both of you, both of you have ended the things in your life that you've outgrown like you two have outgrown your young phase and you two are very much just opening a chapter of maturity and opening a chapter of like hey i built my life and i'm ready for like moving into the chapter and look at this we even have this book here we're moving into a new chapter and you two are going to start a new chapter together you two are going to start on a new page this is a fresh chapter this is going to be a relationship unlike any that you've ever experienced because you're coming from a place of both being very established and not needing something from one another it's a very beautiful relationship because both of you just get to enjoy each other because you don't need anything you're not looking for a partner because you need financial support you're not looking for a partner because you need confidence boost you're not looking for a partner because you need an ego boost you're not looking for a partner because you're lacking something you're just looking for a partner because you want to share your life with somebody and you're just ready to have like a partner in crime where it's just a beautiful loving. You're just, you just want to love, right? So it's going to be a beautiful connection because of that. So with that being said, the next two cards that we have here, we have coming to life and we also have movement. Ooh. So movement can talk about moving, can sometimes talk about distance or it could talk about travel. It can talk about that right when you meet each other, it's just solid movement forward. There's no thinking about it. There's no back and forth. There's no, we need to talk about it. We need to figure it out. It just seems like it's gliding forward. Like your relationship is just smooth movement in, in the direction that you're wanting it to go. It's just movement in general. So it's a very good card coming up for you. We also have coming to life, which is very interesting because we have death and then coming to life. So both of you have probably just ended like old relationships, at least slightly recently before you meet each other. Not like super recently. I don't feel like it's like we ended relationships like three months before meeting each other. I think it's more like we like you've ended relationships like a year at least like, you know, but maybe love life wasn't something that was you know, very lively because you've been very focused. I think both of you are very career oriented and both of you are very career focused, but then all of a sudden this just sort of blossoms and just comes to life. And this is igniting you. It ignites you on deep levels. It moves you like this relationship is something that moves you and it moves the other person too. It's like, this is something where it's like, we're ready to just go with wherever this takes us because this is a relationship where we're both very into it and we're here for it it brings us alive we come to life around this person um and it might be also because you two are very career focused right and i think both of you get your zest out of life in your career because it seems like you two are very established like it's a very established part of your life but this person makes you come alive in ways that have not been activated before because you two get to build something that you share together in a very beautiful way. And it's really going to make you more lively than you ever have before. I think that this person's also going to awaken in you parts that were asleep forever. This person is going to awaken in you parts that you've never even seen in yourself before. Loving parts of yourself that have never even been activated. This person's really activating you on a deep level to where you've never experienced before. And I think it's because you're meeting each other at such a beautiful point in your life. And because of that, because of the fact that you're meeting each other when you're both are already established, you are able to open up more than you ever have. You are able to love easier than you ever have because you're not forcing something you're not needing something from somebody and so it's 
it's really going to activate your each other's souls on such a different level than you've ever experienced before. And I also think it's because you've really cut out certain things in your life. And because of that, you've learned what it takes to be on your own. You've learned what it takes to be alone. And you've really discovered yourself. And now you get to discover yourself even deeper because you have a person that's going to reflect back to you deeper things than you ever even realized were sitting dormant underneath the surface. So beautiful. With that being said, the next two cards we have ground. So this person makes you feel very safe and very grounded. This person makes you feel very practical, good. And I don't mean practical in a boring way. I don't mean that in a boring way. I mean it in the way of like, both of you are very grounded. You're not all over the place, confused and things like that. You're very grounded. You're very sure. You're very clear on what it is you want. And it doesn't mean you can't have fun. In fact, I see you guys having a lot of fun together coming to life. You two are coming alive together, but it's an aliveness where you're still very grounded and very clear on what you're doing, what you're deciding to do. And yeah, it's just, it, it's something that's sure. And it's committed. Grounded is also commitment. And it's also when we are rooted to something, there's a solid foundation. We're not flowing with the wind, getting whipped around everywhere. We're rooting ourselves into this. We also have soul healing. Ooh. So the soul healing, I think both of you are healing on very deep levels because you two have gone through many changes, transitions, and endings. I think that this relationship is going to unlock your heart in ways that it never has been before. Because this is something so solid that I think you're going to be able to open up more than you ever have before. And it's coming along in like perfect timing. It's not rushing. It's just a solid movement towards more opening up, more opening up, more opening up. It's a, it's a gradual, perfect movement. <laughs> I'm also picking up a, a funny little uh, passionate. The movement can also be connected to passionate. Maybe you two both move in similar ways to where you two get... I, I'm getting very not PG right now. <laughs> Maybe you two just have the same sort of like language and body language in movement, you know? Anyway, getting past that, um, you two are very grounded together. It's very soul healing on many aspects because it just seems like both of you have the same direction in mind. You two have the same end goal. You two are headed in the same direction. You two are growing in the same direction. And because of that, you two are a very perfect match because you have the same goals in life. You have the same growth that you're trying to achieve. Um, and it really just brings you alive. And the aliveness that this person makes you feel is going to be so healing. It's going to make you open up again deeper than you ever have before. It's going to be beautiful. The next two cards, we have the card here of joy. So lots of fun together. This card honestly just represents joy, fun. Um, the fact that it's very yellow makes me think of the solar plexus chakra, which is all about expression. So as you two get deeper together, your expression is going to... Uh, become stronger and stronger where you two feel like you can express yourselves more and more um, and the courage to express yourself more is going to come out the courage to open up more is going to start to come out um, and also just having fun because yellow is also a very playful energy so I see you two also being very playful together in a very fun sort of like laughter way like lots of ja lots of laughter and almost like a childlike fun coming to the surface and courage to open up more than you ever have before courage to go so deep into something and you feel so confident about it you feel confident about where it's going and so there's this confidence to to commit and to keep moving forward with this person so that also looks very beautiful there the next three cards that we have for you we have the first house of arrivals this is the new chapter so the first house is also connected to aries which is connected to the emperor card so this is also talking about the fact that you're going to meet this person when you're start, sort of starting a new chapter in your life like maybe you've either just recently moved or you've just you know ended an old chapter be, recently begun something new like a new business whatever um but yeah you're 
you're definitely entering a new phase of your life. And this person's also going to open up a new chapter for you too. And you two are going to open up a new sort of book together that you, that you two can, sorry, I'm like stuttering, that you two can both uh, write in. Ooh, and then we have Juno, which is the asteroid of partnership and love. It is the love asteroid. It is the connection asteroid. Um, maybe you two are also going to have some strong Juno aspects when you first meet each other um, in your astrology charts. But either, either way, the fact that Juno is coming up just means that there's going to be a very beautiful, strong partnership between you two where both of you want to be each other's partners. Both of you just are very mutual on how you feel about each other. It's a very mutual connection here. And very loving and very supportive. And yeah, it's like both of you are just on the same page. <laughs> we also have Capricorn right here. Capricorn is commitments. It is striving to get to the top. So both of you are striving to, have, to create the best connection possible. Striving to get to the top, striving to be the best for one another. So I see you two also being very conscious of each other and desiring to be the best for each other. And also to get to a certain goals. I think you two are going to have a very particular goal. This could even mean that your careers connect in some way since we have Capricorn. Like that you could maybe even start a business together or start doing some sort of work together in some way. Um, so it could also be a thing here especially since you two are very much work oriented, I do see some sort of maybe helping each other out in work um, or some sort of connection there or some sort of similar goal at the very least that you two desire to achieve and get to. This could be a financial goal. This could be a career goal. This could be a owning a certain home type of goal, you know? So there's definitely a certain, um, certain aspects here that both of you are sort of going in the same direction. So it's kind of like a perfect movement. It's a perfect direction and path opening up. So with that being said, the next three cards we have here and now, you two are very present with each other. So one thing that I'm noticing in this card is the, the here and now talks about the present moment, right? And I think both of you, you don't care about the past and you're not focused on necessarily the future. You're focused on creating the best present moment and when you two are together you're focused on the present moment you're not focused on like like oh what text message am I gonna get or like what is this or like what is that or like thinking about constantly like, what am I gonna make for dinner when I get home what am I gonna do this what am I gonna do that and you're not thinking about your past either you're not thinking about like some previous lover you had you're not thinking about um how things went for you in the past and being concerned about that you are very present when you're with this person. You almost feel like you haven't had a past when you're with this person. And you almost feel like the future isn't something that's worrying you when you're with this person because it, you're just so sure and you're constantly just living in the present moment with this person and it feels very good. And you're very present when you're around each other. And I think you two listen to each other very well and you communicate very well because of the fact that you're very present. And whenever you do think about the future, you two are both, I think, successful enough to where you make the future the present moment. Whatever you desire in the future, you sort of just open up the doorway to the present moment and be like, okay, let's do that. Let's do it. You know, it's not even a question. It's just like, let's do that. Let's be that. Let's become that. Um, so yeah. Then we also have all that glitters. Ooh, I think you two really shine when you're together and you two really bring out the best in, one, in each other. And you also are very attracted to one another. You just see each other as gold. You see each other as like, wow, I'm so lucky to have this person. Um, and you both feel that way about each other, which is so beautiful. It's a very mutual feeling. And you two are almost like a king and queen. All that glitters, like look at all this gold and all that. I'm getting this king and queen feeling from this group. So... <laughs> and also the mask I feel like you two take off each other take off a mask when you're around each other because you two feel like you can be open and authentic um so yeah and also feel like you two are a little bit private as well because the mask is almost making me feel like you two aren't here to show off your relationship you're not here to rub it in anybody's face you're not here to rub your success in anybody's face I think you two are very humble and just very much like together and excited to share it together but you're not here to like show it off but yet by being yourselves you kind of just shine and sparkle anyway to where people just notice it anyway 
Yeah. Then the next card, we have breathe. You two are very calm around each other. You two feel like it's a breath of fresh air to be around each other. Um, almost feel like a meditative, just calm energy when you two are around each other. You feel like you can really be yourself. Like you don't have to put on a show. You don't have to, like you could just be present in this moment and you feel like you could live in that internal moment like for a lifetime. It just feels so good when you're around this person. Um, yeah, honestly, this pile is really good. <laughs> That's one thing I could say while reading this. This pile is beautiful <laughs> to say the least. You two definitely shine and you two might um, accumulate a lot of wealth together too just because of all this gold in this card. Um, and you might just shine without even trying, but maybe your career is, maybe you're also going to do something career-wise and it's going to be very um, successful. I just see a lot of success between you two. So with that being said, we're also going to take these cards. We're going to shuffle them to get sort of the appearance of this person as well. But first, I'm going to restart my camera before it cuts out. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and shuffle these to get some confirmation on the way that this person looks so veiled this person doesn't try to show off their looks but we also have a lot of yellow coming through again this person shines without trying this person's not trying to show off or shine but they just do anyway we also have vigilance this person's probably very strong they probably have um a very good body the stone's making me think of something that's very strong. We also have volatility of the volcano. This means that they're very hot. It's steamy. We had this come up for another group as well. Um, yeah, that just means hot and steamy. Like, yeah. Some steam right there. We also have the invocation ceremony. Ceremony's making me think about weddings, uh, marriage. Although we're talking about the way that this person looks, I know, but that's coming to mind. We also have childhood. This came up for another group too. We have a lot of the same cards coming up. I feel like pulling one more for you. All right, cards. Let's see. <laughs> we had this one come up for another group as well. This person is very dreamy to you. They have a very dreamy look. They are very attractive. They probably are very strong. I think this person works out when you have the stone people. I just think that this person probably works out, takes care of, them takes care of themselves. Um, the childhood, they probably remain youthful in their appearance. Like they probably have young looking skin. They probably take care of their skin. They might have some sort of youthfulness about them. Um, and ceremony, when it comes to the way somebody looks, like this is something that you want to shine or celebrate. This is something where it's like, ooh, that's so beautiful. Like this person also might put some effort into the way that they look too, because ceremony makes me think about like doing makeup um, or, you know, getting dressed, getting ready, trying to make yourself look nice, right? I also think this person has a naturally beautiful look as well. Like they have an innocent, naturally beautiful look. They might look quite innocent, but yet sexy, like innocent, but sexy, um, very dreamy strong and um they do put a little bit of effort into the way that they look at least once in a while with the ceremony card because that's just making me feel like somebody getting ready so yeah that is what we have here they're not really talking much about anything else about the way that they look like i'm not really seeing i'm getting like um if they have a hair color it's either more ashy or black or it's like an ashy color like maybe an ashy brown or an ashy blonde or a black because when I think about the stone colors, I think about very ashy colors. And so the colors that I'm getting from that is definitely either black or like an ashy blonde or like an ashy brown. So that's one thing I'm getting there. Um, yeah, so that is what we have for you. I'm either also getting green or brown eyes or green that has a little bit of brown in it or brown that maybe has a little bit of green going on. <laughs> I know that's quite a few different options, but I'm just pointing out all the things that we sort of see here. Um, but yeah, to say the least, you're definitely going to be attracted to them. There's definitely a big attraction here. So that is what we have going on. Also stone. One other thing I'm getting from stone is um, 
a chiseled, chiseled features, sharp features, harder features. Like you can, their bone structure is prominent. Cause if you think about stone, it's like their bone structure is prominent. So this person definitely has a more like defined bone structure in their face and maybe in their body. It's quite defined. And it's like dreamy, sexy, but also maybe their, maybe their eyes have some sort of innocence to them. The way that their eyes are, maybe they have like puppy dog eyes a little bit and maybe their skin is also pretty youthful. So yeah, that's what we have there for their looks. So I hope you enjoyed this reading group number five. You look like you're going to have an amazing soulmate twin flame. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. And I hope to see you there. Bye.